Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, it's another little golden book. They were prolific even when I was a child. Imagine what the catalog is like now. Crazy, I've been to their website. <laughs> so this is another licensed one. Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse and the Great Lot Plot. I think we saw a copy of this at that little bookstore we've been to. We did, but this one is mine. Mm. Even has my name in it. Ah. Is... No author or illustrator name on the first page. Oh. Yeah. Just an illustration of Mickey Mouse. Nope. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't give author or illustrator credit. Hmm. That's interesting. Because it's not in the fine print or the back of the book. Interesting. There was just a sign with Mickey Mouse and a couple of kids with a sign that says, This land for sale. And normally the author and illustrator would be right in there. And it's not in this fine print either. Look at that! Morty and Freddy dropped their bat and ball and stared at the sign in front of them. This land for sale. I can't believe it, said Minnie Mouse. This is the only vacant lot left for blocks around. Interesting. That bin with a giant money symbol on it looks familiar. That would be specifically a dollar symbol. Maybe whoever buys the land will let children play here, Mickey Mouse said hopefully. I'm going to buy it, said a voice behind them. It was Uncle Scrooge McDuck. He's not uncle to everybody. <laughs> but that's how people know him. It's right next to my money bin, and it's the best place for my new business. Scrooge's perfectly planted, picked, and processed, patented pickled preserves. Holy alliterations, Batman. And yes, I did do that in one take. Yes, she did, ladies and gentlemen. I can attest to that. I'm the editor. Also interesting, he says my money bin. He usually says me. Hmm. Though this is more American grammatically correct. Morty and Ferdy wrinkled their noses. Ugh, how can anyone think pickled preserves are more important than baseball? <clears throat> okay, yeah, definitely American. But Scrooge was very sure they were. Scrooge is perfectly pat... Now I'm going to mess it up. Scrooge's perfectly planted, picked, and processed, patented pickled preserves will be a good business, he said. Then he turned and walked away to his money bin. Very nice illustrations so far. I'm trying to figure out which era of Mickey Mouse this is. Because it's actually a nice chart showing how Mickey has changed through the ages. Well, this is copyright 1974. Ah, I think it also explains the more full outfits on all the mice and characters, too. Because... Mickey didn't start wearing full clothes until later. Most of the time he's just shown with his pants, his classic pants, you see, they're red. But in this one, he and both boys are wearing full outfits. Minnie is in a custom dress. The very classic pink one. Mickey and the others followed. They found him seated on a big pile of money, wiggling his toes and smiling happily. Won't you please think it over, Uncle Scrooge? Mickey asked. The children really need a place to run and play. No, answered Uncle Scrooge. My mind is made up and that's final. Who gets to just walk into the money bin? That's exactly what I was thinking. Also, this is like the fullest I've seen it. You know, I think I saw this particular image in a MatPat video. When he was trying to calculate exactly how much money Scrooge McDuck has. Well, you know, the money could never be too close to the top because then there was no point in diving. Mmm... Good point, but for this illustration, they wanted to show how full the money bin was. You know, to really emphasize how wealthy Scrooge McDuck is. But playgrounds are important, insisted Mickey. Then, before he quite knew what he was saying, he had made an announcement of his own. I'm going to buy that lot, and I'll make it into a playground for everyone to enjoy. Scrooge laughed so hard he rolled off the pile of money. Where will you get the money to buy this lot, he demanded. Especially with the fact that Scrooge already has the money, he can easily put a offer to the land first. Especially after you announce that you're going to buy it. Also, he can easily beat whatever you're going to offer. And he's not going to have to beat it by much, so it's not even like you can outbid him to the point where Scrooge is no longer willing to spend the money. As they left the money bin, Mickey's brave smile changed to a frown. Where will I get the money, he wondered. But Minnie and the boys were bubbling with excitement. Why, we'll earn it, they exclaimed. 
Don't worry, Mickey. Our friends will be happy to help, too. Does this include Donald? Well, we don't know where this is in the timeline. Hmm. So we don't know where Donald is. Oh, there he is. And so they were. Those next few weeks, Mickey's friends were the busiest people in town. Busiest of all was Mickey himself. He helped Donald Duck and his nephew wash cars. Then he helped dry Huey, Dewey, and Louie, who got as wet as the cars they were washing. He helped Goofy, whose dog walking job became too much for him to handle alone. Um, I got some questions. Does that equate to a dog walking a dog? Kind of. He helped Morty and Ferdy sell the pies and cakes that Minnie and Daisy Duck baked. Got the whole gang. Just about. At the end of the month, Mickey counted up all the money that everyone had earned and given to him. It came to exactly $500. That wasn't much, and Mickey was worried. The next day, he went to see Uncle Scrooge. I'm very sad, he said. Altogether, we've only been able to earn $500, Uncle Scrooge, and I know that isn't enough money to buy the lot. You certainly can pay much more than that for it. Too bad, Mickey. Uncle Scrooge said, smiling. Looks like the lot will be mine. It's sure a perfect place for my new pickle preserve factory. Interesting. The expression on Scrooge is it's hard to explain. It's happy, but it's not triumphant? Well, there wasn't a challenge. How would Mickey possibly earn enough money to outbid Uncle Scrooge on a lot? Mm. He's Scrooge McDuck. The richest duck for a reason. He was smarter than the Smarties and tougher than the Tuffies. Later that day, Scrooge walked happily down the street and stopped in front of the empty lot. Hi, Uncle Scrooge. There were Morty and Ferdy. Got any jobs you want done? Certainly not, snapped Uncle Scrooge. The only help I need is in understanding what's so important about a playground. A lot of foolishness, if you ask me. Humph. What about the adventure? How much adventure can you find in an empty lot? Quite a bit, especially if you shrunk down to the size of an ant. Yes, but we're not doing that in this book. Nope. We can't tell you, said Morty. But we can show you, added Ferdy. Here, catch, Morty shouted. And before he knew it, Uncle Scrooge was out on the empty lot, playing a fast game of baseball. Interesting. Well, think about it. He grew up in Scotland. I'm pretty sure he's never played baseball. Ah, he's probably golfed a lot if you go by the stereotype. It was nearly dark when the three finally sat down to rest. Well, Uncle Scrooge, said Morty, now do you see what's so great about a playground? Uncle Scrooge was puffing so hard he couldn't answer them. The next day, the boys were waiting when Uncle Scrooge came down the street. Tag, shouted Marty. You're it, yelled Ferdy. And before he knew what had happened... Uncle Scrooge was chasing the boys across the field. You can play all kinds of good games on a playground, said Morty, when they stopped to rest at last. Interesting. I, I see how they're tricking him. Air quotes on tricking. Mm hmm Humph, Uncle Scrooge humphed. This time he was so tired that he fell asleep right there under a tree. And while he slept, he had a very strange dream. It was like no dream Uncle Scrooge had ever had before. Interesting dream. It's one of him champion game player with a big banner across him. He's being presented by two men for that universe. Two dressed officials on a platform and a crowd cheering. Think Charlotte's Web if you need a reference. Oh, that is a very good reference. The next day... Mickey and his friends watched as the owner of the land put up a new sign on the lot. It said, Sold to Scrooge McDuck. Everyone groaned. Everyone, that is, except Scrooge. He was overjoyed. Also, I know there are public records of who owns land, but usually it's just sold, not whom, to whom it is sold. Mm, well, to emphasize it for the story. As they turned to leave, their faces sad. Scrooge shouted, Wait here a few minutes. I have a surprise for you all. Soon workmen began to arrive. They lifted swings and slides into place. They started to dig a swimming pool. In the corner, they marked the lines for a baseball diamond. Interesting. Also, lots of nice illustrations of the equipment men working. Nice silhouettes in the background of Scrooge saying, Wait a moment. <laughs>
Scrooge just stood there and grinned, while Mickey and his friends gave three tremendous cheers. Uncle Scrooge, Mickey asked, how can we ever thank you enough? We're awfully glad you changed your mind. Now we can buy uniforms for all of the baseball team using our $500. The day of the first game in the new park finally arrived. Uncle Scrooge was given the honor of hitting the very first pitched ball. Hurrah! The crowd cheered as the ball soared into the air. The cheer was cut short by the tinkling of glass. The ball had crashed through a window in Scrooge's own money bin. Well, at least he hit it. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry about your window, Uncle Scrooge, called Mickey. But Uncle Scrooge was already on his way to first base. It's only glass, he shouted over his shoulder. But did you see that? I do believe I hit a home run. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because it's Scrooge saying it's only glass. I'm guessing he didn't pay much for that window. Probably not. And I'm sure it's insured. Oh, that was a fun little book. Very nice illustrations. It's a bummer it's not credited, though. Yeah. There's nothing anywhere in the book to say who the author or authors and illustrator or illustrators are. Yeah, it's just the trademarks for little Golden, Disney... Nothing. The other licensed books had that credit information, but this one does not. And the other little Golden books overall have had author credits. At the least, and usually both author and illustrator credits, because we do credit the creators. Anything on the backpack? No, just the usual Golden Brooks blurb. Hmm, that's odd. Quite. I'm almost thinking because it's Disney and they had a lot of people working on it, so it may have been multiple writers and illustrators, a team, because Disney's very good at getting a team to draw pretty much exactly the same. Because otherwise the animated features would take even longer to finish. I mean, you could at least put, you know, by Disney's House of Mouse, or, you know, by the Walt Disney Company, or by the writers and animators of Disney. You know, at least a generic one, even if you're not going to give specific names. Yeah, I'm guessing all they need is Walt Disney's. I, I guess that's all it takes, but that still seems quite odd. Hmm. Well, maybe we can look it up somewhere online, and I can add it into the text below. If we can find out, because, I mean, we have the name, we have a publishing date, we know who the publisher is. So maybe we can find something. Hmm. So, what did you think of this fun little book? Cute. And it is surprisingly in character for Scrooge, because there are times and reasons where things other than money come into play. And Scrooge has always been shown to have a heart. He's never been heartless. That's saved for Glomgold. <laughs> I wear a kilt, McDuck! A kilt! Yes, we really like the new DuckTales reboot. And so being shown how fun a playground can be and how useful it is to the neighborhood, not to mention probably the tax credits he gets for putting together a space for public use. Hmm. If I even worked out a deal with the city or something... Probably, because he turned this area into a public space. He's not charging them to step onto the lot. No. Nope. He's not charging them to use it. He didn't even ask Mickey for the $500 as a thank you. He let Mickey buy the uniforms, which are nicely illustrated on the cover. Though it does make sense, because if the park's going to be right next to his money bin, everything that happens in the park needs to look good. Hmm. So having the players out there in uniform looks a lot better than a bunch of kids just running around. Well, I'm surprised Scrooge didn't say, I'll pay for the uniforms. Then they have big money bin logos on them. Well, Scrooge knew they earned the $500 specifically for the playground. Hmm. Also, I'm not sure when uh, uniform endorsement logos started. That may not have been uh, very common back here. Good point. Also, Another thing to point out is it's a very classic version of Scrooge. He's shown in purple in this. He wasn't. He didn't change his colors until later. Well, this was published in 1974, so it's a very classic. Because you don't see Morty and Ferdy in later episodes either. You know, just Mickey and Minnie. You don't see younger mice. Also interesting that Daisy is mentioned but not shown. Yeah. 
because she helped Minnie bake all those pies and cakes, and we have the boys selling one to a female duck, but we don't see Daisy. And poor Donald and the boys, back when they were basically the same character. Pretty much. Also, I guess there was too much blue on this page, because Dewey's shirt is actually purple. Hmm. Because, you know, Mickey's wearing blue, Donald's wearing blue. And Huey and Louie are in their classic colors. So, only Dewey's different. So, yeah, fun. Not really something that, well, maybe that you could take a lesson from. Money's not everything. I think that is most definitely the lesson they were going for. Also, that fun is more important than a lousy business. Well, I'm sure Scrooge did quite a lot of research to make the determination that Scrooge's perfectly planted, picked, and processed, patented pickled preserves would be a b good business, because he says it will be a good business. And now you're just showing off. <laughs> showing off would be doing it from memory. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Scrooge's perfectly planted, picked, and packed pickled preserves. Ding! I should have had you holding the book to see if that was correct. Ah, uh, nope. I missed a couple of words. Oh! Because it's Scrooge's perfectly planted, picked, and processed, patented pickle preserves. I missed patented. Hmm. That's... Oh, well. It was still fun. Yeah, it was amazing. Like, those wonderful tongue twisters slash practice phrases from... I believe singing in the rain. You mean like sinful Caesar sniffed his sifter, sneezed his knees, and sneezed. Yes, like that. <laughs> he brought it up. I still need to watch it. Yeah, yeah, I need to fix that. <laughs> All right, so this has been a little golden book, Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse and the Great Lot Plot. We don't know who wrote it or drew it, but we enjoy the work. Thank you. You're awesome. Wherever you are, whoever you were. If you have listened to this, please write in the comments below. We would love to give you credits. Or if you have a fun story from the production of it. <laughs> oh, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, uh, we have lots of other Ember's Reading Room videos. If you want to stray away from the book section, we do have Disney content uh, relating to movies and television series. Also, if you're looking for a copy of this book, I mean, it's Disney. Disney tends to release everything in cycles. This has got to be around somewhere. Check for an Amazon link. If you just feel like uh, doing some shopping, yes, like Scrooge, I also enjoy money, there's an Ebates link. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.